So what is a good conversion rate for your online course? Today on this up close and personal air quote edition of DSG TV. All right, welcome everyone. David Seitman Garland, AKA DSG. So this is a big question that comes up all the time is people love, you know, comparing to other people and things like that and saying, okay, what's a good conversion rate for my online course? Meaning, you know, conversion rate wise, meaning, okay, this is how many people it went out to, this is how many people bought, what's a good conversion rate? Is it 1%, 5%, 900%? That, that'd be very good if you had 900% FYI and it also wouldn't be possible. Um, or also, this is not just for selling online courses, this is really for anything that is kind of um, percentage driven, if you will, with online marketing and online courses and mediapreneurship and things like that. So meaning, um, you know, hey, is my landing page converting at a good percentage? Hey, is my webinar converting at a good percentage? Uh, or whatever that number might be. So I'm gonna give you the definitive answer right here, right now. And again, I've seen this for years and years and years and years, and this is very, very important to understand uh, because comparing things to other people or even a group of other people is very, very difficult in this industry and here's why. Because everyone has a very, very different background. Everyone has a different relationship with the people on their email list and their fans and subscribers and things like that. Everyone's in different industries. There's so many different factors that come into play, right? Because for example, you know, we do uh, a lot of joint venture webinars that I do for my Create Awesome Online Courses program. And it's fascinating because I've probably done, I don't know, I was looking at the numbers the other day. I mean, definitely close to Maybe, maybe even 100 or close to 100 joint venture webinars uh, with Create Awesome Online Courses. And it's funny where you look at, okay, which ones are doing great and which ones didn't do so good. It's really interesting, same presentation, but you look at people's different audiences, it's not always size, it's not always that. There's people that are smaller but mightier. Maybe they have an amazing relationship with their customers and people like that. There's people that maybe have been at this for a long, long period of time. So anything that they do, their, uh, their audience and, and their people respond to that. There's people that are brand new so it's gonna be lower because they're just getting used to this and, and kind of building trust and building those relationships. These things take time. Right? So my point is, of, of why I'm sharing that little quick story there, is that at the end of the day, the percentage or of conversions for your online course or anything like that, you only wanna compare it to your own data. So create your own data and then compare it to that. Don't worry about what an industry standard might be because there really isn't. If you look around, there's so much different information on that it's only gonna confuse you, it's over gonna, only gonna overwhelm you, and it's also can be you know, confidence killing. So for example, let's just say someone says the industry average for conversion for an online course is 5%. That's not what it is. Let's just say there was some kind of average and you converted at 4%. Well, that could be unbelievable and amazing for you. You've got all these new people that you can help and serve and all these different things, but you might be shattered confidence wise and say, oh my God, I'm only 4%, everyone else is 5% or higher. I'm doing a really bad job. So again, my big recommendation on data, and this is for conversions for your online course and really everything is to compare it against itself, right? Compare you to you. So get your baseline data when you launch your online course, then when you do your next promotion or your next thing, Boom, keep getting more data and trying to improve it. When you do your first webinar, your second webinar, or whatever it might be, be comparing webinar, your webinar, to your webinar, right? That, that, that's the best way of doing it. So I cannot recommend that highly enough and just don't get bogged down into that thing. Just focus on the basics, um, which is serving your customers, getting those people in, helping them get results. That's what online courses are all about. And the rest will kind of Take care of itself, right? So don't fret about that. Don't worry about that. Don't think, am I doing good? Am I doing bad? Just keep comparing it to yourself and try to improve every single new thing that you do. Whew, that was a mouthful. That was a lot of DSG TV coming at you right there because this is a very important subject because I probably see it come up, I don't know, I mean, at least once a week in our Create Awesome Online Courses private Facebook group just for my Create Awesome Online Courses students is people saying something like, oh, I, I did this launch and this is what it did, is that good, is that bad? You know, you know, and that's where I wanted to make sure to answer that here in DSG TV. So, 
on the way out. Reminder, if you wanna get started and you're sitting there and you're like, well, I wanna learn how to create, promote, and profit for my own online course, I have an absolutely free training for you at therisetop.com slash learn online courses. That's therisetop.com slash learn online courses. All right, folks, see you next time on GSD. I cannot say my own name, that's a good one. See you next time on, what is this called? DSG TV.